השם, סור רבנו, the sweet רבנו הקדוש is teaching us in תורה ל"ה 35 in the seventh part אבל כשאדם מכניס שכלו, when the man puts his wisdom, היינו נשמתו, means his poor soul, בתוך האמונה, into the faith, היינו פשט האורייתא, simple learning of Torah, היינו משא ומתן, means to make business with faith, מבחינת חדשים לבקרים, to purify your faith every day, every morning, אזי צריך לשמור האמונה, so then you need to watch over your faith, שלא ינקו ממנה החיצונים. that the outsiders will not going to take your power from your soul means that when you're going to do business when you're going to put your mind into sleep into the Torah you what in all of the aspects that Rabbeinu called that sleep you should watch over yourself to prepare yourself like that like we're saying before of Kriyat Shema before going to sleep we're saying Kriyat Shema and you prepare yourself to that to that sleep because you don't have no control on yourself when you're asleep so you need to prepare yourself also when you go to make business you don't know what's gonna happen over there so you need to prepare yourself also when you're going to the yeshiva to learn Torah you don't know what's gonna pump up what's gonna come into your life you don't know what's gonna be you just know that it's a risk you know that before you're going to the Itbodedut You need to prepare yourself because you don't know which Yetzirah are going to come on you in the Itbodedut. You can go and decide that you're going to pray on something and suddenly during the Itbodedut you're going to be so frustrated and you're going to realize something on yourself that you didn't know and you're going to fall to such a horrible place and you don't know what to do. You don't know how to drag yourself back home from the field and you come with despair and with sadness from the Itbodedut. So this is why a man should prepare himself before of all of the Avodat Hashem to prepare. This is why Rabbeinu told us that we need to make bracha before of eating. Because if just you're going to eat, you don't know what's going to happen to you after you ate. You can decide, now I'm going to eat something small and then I'm going to sit and learn. And after it, you finish to eat and you went to sleep. Why? Because you don't have a control. You don't know what you're going to eat. How it's going to affect you. There are sparks and spirits inside of everything. This is why you have to make a bracha. And you have to prepare yourself to the eating. You have to prepare yourself to the limud. You have to prepare yourself to Pesach. You have to prepare yourself to every situation in your life to be ready. That everything can happen. That the faith is getting renewed every moment. Every moment the neshama is coming down back. Back from heaven all of the time. Like a, like a spring. Like, like, a, like a river that always comes. And, 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 and it's always changing. In a certain time of your life you can be very generous. And in a different time of your life you can be very strict. In a different time of your life you can be very humble. And in a different time you can have crazy lusts and desires that you don't know how to ride that horse. You don't know what to do with your body that is getting wilder and wilder. And you're praying. And you're doing that half an hour. And you're praying and you're trying and you're learning Torah and nothing helps. This is why a man needs to prepare himself always to surprise always to surprise always to know Hashem Itbarach every morning He's renewing everything every morning means every moment every moment you should prepare yourself and to remind yourself that Hashem Itbarach is bigger than us bigger than us and we cannot grab Him we cannot understand Him you cannot see Him and to stay in that body You cannot, we're not able to. This is why always, always, always we need to prepare ourselves. No matter what's going to happen, I will always going to keep on coming to this Shiva. No matter what my Yetzirah going to tell me, I will always going to keep on keeping Shabbos. I will all to prepare yourself because you don't know what's going to be. No one have no guarantee on nothing. And if you're growing and developing in the Avodat Hashem, Ad Rabba, Kol HaGadol Mechavero, Yitzro Gadol Mimenu. When you're growing, your Yetzirah is growing with you. And like that you don't know who you are, and you're not aware to yourself, also you can never know the size of your Yetzirah, and how much it can be strong, and how much it can ruin and burn your house from the foundations. You can never know. You can never know what's going to come into your mind. You can never imagine. This is why we always need to humble ourselves and to prepare ourselves and to say, please, Ribbono Shalom, I'm begging, I'm begging, please. 
help me to hold on, help me to stay in this wonderful mm, way of, of life that I live today, to wake up every morning, to pray, to do my Netilat Yadayim. Please, Father, I'm begging to hold that simplicity. Not to imagine to yourself that you have something in your pocket. You don't have nothing in your pocket. Huge, righteous people, tzaddikim, of the Hashem, lost everything. Huge, righteous people that were sacrificing their lives for Am Israel and doing huge things, lost everything. No one have no guarantee. If you're arrogant, you have Yetzara, you don't know what it can do. It's like a match in the field. You don't know. It can be a very small fire that you can handle it. And it can be, if there is a Siata Dishmaya, you can lose all of your control. And to lose all of your field. And to lose houses. And it can burn other people's houses also. And you don't know what's going to happen with you. This is why Moshe Rabbeinu is always begging to Hashem Itbarach Vait Khanan El Hashem Baetai. That he's begging to Hashem in that time. Which time? Every time he's begging. Every time he's begging. Every time he's coming humble. Every time he's coming low. Every time he's saying, please, please. This is why Moshe Rabbeinu is standing between Shmad to Ratzon. The numeral value of Moshe Rabbeinu, one lower than Moshe Rabbeinu is the word Shmad. How we said that we're saying Shmad? Destruction. Destruction. And one above him, it's Ratzon. It's the will. If Moshe is succeeding, he wants to serve Hashem. He's holding that will. No matter what he's doing, if he's succeeding, if he's failing, it's all in the hands of Hashem. The actions are all belong to Hashem. He's trying to hold the will. And if he's falling, it's a distraction. I mean, you don't know where it's going to take you. Avera goreret avera. A sin dragged another sin. And if you made one sin, there is no guarantee which they want to be the next one. You don't know which sin going to be the next one. It can be Eshet Ish. It can be murder. It can be, I don't know what. Who is promising to you that it won't be something crazy? No one. You know that Avera goreret Avera. It doesn't written which Avera drags which Avera. You don't know who you are. You don't know what's your Tikkun. Maybe a person is very, very arrogant and he needs really, really to be humiliated. How am I going to be humiliated? That he sins. This is what we're saying. Forgive us, Father, because we sinned. Because now after I sinned, I know. I know exactly where I'm holding. <laughs> I'm nothing. I'm zero. Only when a man is hurting his wife, he realizes that he's a sinner, that he's a zero. Only after a person hits his children against his will, then he wakes up to understand, I was so wrong. Only when you find yourself that you're a thief, that you're a, thief, that you're a liar, that you easy can cheat your wife, can cheat your rabbi, can cheat your family, can, can lie to yourself, can curse Hashem, whatever. Only then you learn humility. And Hashem Barach, He is taking all of the suffering. Hasovel, He is suffering, He is accepting. He is taking all of our filth, all of our downs on himself to be insulted, to be hurt, to be disgraced. He's taking it all because he wants the humility that's going to come after it. And it's also a very strong trick, advice for us to know whatever you're going through, don't take it too seriously. It's coming only to humiliate you. It's very hard. <laughs> no doubt. It's very hard to be humiliated. It's very hard. It's not an easy thing to go through. But it's only for that. <coughs> Really? You're gonna have a world to come. Really? You're gonna succeed in life. Really? Everything gonna be okay. Just now you need to be humiliated. If a man is falling to that stress of that situation, but what I'm gonna do? How I'm gonna deal? How I'm gonna manage? What are, what's gonna happen? What else can come? You're gonna fall to stress and belachat and the enemy is standing over there waiting for you for that crack, for that fear, for that stress and then he can break you and break you totally. So this is why in every situation we need to come back to faith. It's all good. With the worst thoughts of them all. Even people that have thoughts of committing suicide, killing themselves. You need to say to yourself, this is my Yetzirah of today. That he wants to tell me like that there is a chance that really I'm going to kill myself. And I'm not going to do that. It's only thoughts. 
and nothing happens and everything is good and even if he's telling you throw yourself under the bridge, under the train, under the bus shoot yourself, this is it, cut your beard, cut your peot I'm not doing nothing those are just bad thoughts I'm not getting into stress to anxieties, to fears, to imaginations <coughs> the Yetzer HaRa power is only one, imaginations he push you to believe in the fake reality that he's telling you like you don't have another chance except of cutting your beard. He wants you to be humiliated after you cut your beard that you will not gonna have the courage to deal with it and to come back to the yeshiva without a beard. This is why he's putting you in that situation. He doesn't care about your beard and you can fulfill all of your lasting desires with beard and with peot. You can go to do whatever you want with beard and peot. People done that before. Don't worry. It happened. Don't check in YouTube. It exists. Be strong to know that Yetzer it's imaginations imaginations, no connection to the truth. He's telling you, you have to sell your house, you have to do this, you have to move, this is it, from now on. He wants you to take a decision now. Why? Because now you're weak. Reject that decision. Postponed that decision. Postponed. To the future. Tell him, all right, I hear you. I know a very big businessman. He told me that he can deal with every answer except of one answer. If someone is telling him, all right, I'm gonna think about it, you cannot answer that. This is it. This is, what can you do? All right, I'm gonna, th what are you gonna tell him? Don't think about it. You cannot answer. If he's saying yes, you can argue. If he's saying no, you can argue. Whatever he's gonna say, I think that this, I think that, you can answer, you can argue. If he's telling you, all right, give me two days to think about it. He doesn't have an answer. Yetzirah doesn't have an answer also for you on that. If you're going to tell your Yetzirah, I hear you. I hear you. Sounds logic to sell the house, to leave the yeshiva, to go back to New York. Sounds, sounds the best, but sounds good. sounds good. But sounds about right. But give me two days to think about it. After 10 minutes, you will not gonna be in the same place. It's, you're gonna see that it was nonsense, that it was an illusion. And if you fall in that trap, another trap is waiting over there, and another trap, and this is it, we already started, we called the lawyer, what I'm gonna do, I told my mother, and now the parents, they're pushing, and what then, and then. Be quiet, be wise. Remember, and I'm telling you remember because you're gonna need that advice. Each and every one of us gonna need that advice because Yetzer Ra is not lazy. He's not lazy. He's a maniac. He's sick. He's crazy. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Esther called him a dog and then she regret. And she said he's a lion. He's dangerous and he's mean and he's coming in the weak point in the lowest times of them all, when there is no money, when you're so tired, and you're broke, and your wife she's sad, and she doesn't feel good, and you have stress, then he's coming. That snake is a snake. Then he's coming to the weak people of Am Israel, the ones that in despair, the ones that feel so low and so alone, this is the time that he's coming and biting, penetrating his th th teeth with his poison and bring you to be more sad and more frustrated and more depressed. This is why we need always, always, always to stand up again and to say bad thoughts are imaginations. They're not exist. It's a lie. And even if you see that it's the truth, you're saying if it's bad, it's a lie. And Rabba Olam, there is no bad in the world at all. Hashem is all good. I think that it's bad because I am cooperating with my Yetzer Hara. But when I'm going to learn how to divide myself from him, not to cooperate with him, not to listen to his Lashon Hara anymore, just to listen to the righteous people, 
Say to yourself in the worst time, I'm going to do it after I'm going to finish Tikkun Aklali. I'm saying Tikkun Aklali and then I'm doing it. This is it. You will never going to sin. On no sin, no Avera, the Yetzirah will not going to be able. Tell him, I will after I'm finishing this. I'm doing this and that and then I'm doing it. Whatever. You're not going to do nothing. Hashem going to give you the power. Hashem going to give you the power to succeed. The Yetzirah is like a storm. He's coming and he's got power in that time and after it, like nothing happened. He doesn't have no physical body, doesn't have no reality, no existent. His imagination, he's coming and telling you what are you going to do, when are you going to get married, what's going to be with your future, no money, no this, no friends, you're all alone. Oh, right, phone calls. Don't pick up the phone, don't do nothing. Just chill out, just walk away, go drink a beer, I'm telling you, go buy a pack of cigarettes, go, go away, go to a quiet place, go to the fields, go to a restaurant, buy burgers, sit, eat french fries, be happy, bring a bottle of coca-cola, huge pile of french fries, Hamburger, double, 300 pounds, 600 pounds, whatever you want. You killed him. With your Yetzirah of falling to your lust and desires, you killed him. No decisions under stress. No decisions under stress. Belachatz Oyev, the enemy wants to put you in stress. You're all alone, you're in the apartment, no one is here, you're old, you're too, I don't know what, what's going to be with the future, who's going to take care of you? There are answers to all of those nonsense, just not when you're in stress. When you're in stress, you're not able to answer nothing. The most stupid questions, you don't have a solution where, when you're in stress. But when you're relaxed, when you're breathing, you can answer the biggest question of them all. This is what Hashem wants. Hashem, I love you. Thank you, Hashem. It's all good. I deserve it. Open the book, Garden of Faith. You're going to find all of your answers. Open the book, G Gardens of um, Gratitude. You're going to find all of your answers. You don't need to be afraid of that. Of confronting the worst Yetzirah. When you're breathing, when you have your Hidbodedut on it, you can deal with the worst situation of them all with the worst situations of them all that not going to come on none of us. If you have faith, only kindness is going to surround you if you have confidence in Hashem. What it means confidence? That Hashem is here. I don't need to do nothing out of stress. And even if that stress situation, stressful situation is going through few days, three days already, two weeks already, two months already, five years already. Chaviki matrega, keep on hiding for another moment, adi avorzam, until the anger gonna move away, gonna move away and gonna disappear, gonna disappear. Have to believe that Hashem Barach loves us. Hashem Barach loves us. All of the nations, they have an angel that's guarding them. Am Israel, they don't have the angel. They have HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. He is our minister. He is our king. The only king that we have is the creator himself. He chosen us. There is a table with all of the angels, all of the ministers of all of the nations. Seventy huge angels. The angel of Ishmael, the angel of Edom, the angel of that and this and that. All of them, Amon, Moab, and everyone have angels. Just us we don't have. We have a Kadosh Baruch Hu himself sitting. You have a Kadosh Baruch Hu with you, each and every one of us. This is the main lesson to believe in ourselves inside. And there are situations that the man have to deal alone. That your Rabbi leaves you to deal alone. That the righteous man is hiding his face from you. That Bore Olam is hiding his face from you. That Esther Amalkashi is screaming, Keli, Keli, Lama, Zavtani, Oh God, Oh God, why you left me alone? Why you left me? This is what that Esther Amalkashi, that she is the Shechina Akdosha, this is what that she feels. That Hashem left her. But Mordechai, Yadai Takol, Mordechai, he knows everything. And he went out 
and he's screaming to Akadosh Baruch Hu, you're not hiding your face. No matter what you're gonna let me feel, I know you're with me. Even if you let me feel that you left me, you never leave me. You're with me. I know that. I cannot see that, but I believe in that. The faith is in the nights. And you're st standing strong in front of Hashem and you're forcing Hashem. Sing to the one that when you conquered him, when you beat him, he's happy. He wants you to win. He wants you to get married. He wants you to be rich, to buy a house in Jerusalem. He wants you to be connected to the righteous man of the generation. He wants you to be a Talmud Chacham, to be pure, that your children are going to be pure. He wants you to succeed in life. More than the calf wants to nurse, the mother she wants to feed him. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants your success a lot more than what you want to succeed. You want to eat, you want to sleep, you want a lot of things. Rabbi HaKadosh said, people are coming to me and talking to me about things. And after that they're walking away, they're going to satisfy themselves with their lusts and desires. And me, that I'm not attached to nothing, I stay to suffer all of their sorrow. He's going. Now he came to Rabenu. Rabenu, I'm so poor. We don't have mon money. The children, they're starving. My wife, she's broken. She's sick. The cow just died. Wonderful. And now he's going. Where he's going to? Collect some money. Go buy himself a burger in Burger's Bar. And this is it. And moving on in his life. What can he do? He's going to buy a few tomatoes. Sit and eating them. Few, few apples. Eating them on the way back. And he's dealing in his life. He's going to sleep when he's tired, he's smoking cigarettes, joints, I don't know what, when he's tired, this is it. He's saying bye-bye to the reality, to his stress. But Rabenu, that he's got just only one pure heart to Father in Heaven, he stays. He cannot eat, someone is suffering. He cannot drink, someone is drowning. He cannot sleep, someone is awake. Everyone are asleep. And he is awake, praying and crying. This is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is the righteous people. He's always with you. When you're asleep, He's with you. Bechol tumotam. When you're contaminated and you forgot Hashem. How you been contaminated? You forgot Hashem. Now you saw something. And this is it. There is no Hashem Itbarach for you anymore. But Hashem is there for you. Hashem is saving you from more failures, from more demons, from more husks and outsiders that wants to damage you. Hashem is there. Lo yanum velo yishan shomer Israel. He's not asleep. He's always awake to watch over you, to help you, even when you forget Him. This is why we're saying, "Gretzay Hashem elokenu b'amcha Israel." Please, Hashem wants us, want us, even though that we don't want you. Keep on wanting us because He do. Because Hashem wants us, He loves us, and He care about us, and He doesn't care about Himself. And the righteous people are sacrificing themselves for Am Israel, and they don't have days, and they don't have night, and they don't have family lives, and they don't have hobbies. And our rabbi, our chief rabbi in the yeshiva is going every day. He's not sleeping over two hours a night. Every day giving classes and teaching. And Rav Berland is in Zimbabwe. Can you understand what he's doing for us? No one can understand. He himself ruined his house. He himself ruined his family. He himself sacrificed himself for years, tens of years. Just that you're going to be able to do tshuva. That you're going to have the merit to come to Eretz Israel from Canada. That you're going to have the merit to do tikkun aklali, to come to Oman. Righteous people sacrifice themselves every moment just for us. They don't need nothing. They have it all. They have Hashem. They don't need nothing. So why is keep on sacrificing? Because he wants you to have a path. That the path doesn't come to your doorstep. Because he knows you don't have no power. So he's working to build a factory of distributors. People that are going to go and knock on doors and sell books through the internet. And going to go from a city to a city, from a village to a village. To talk to people through YouTube. To open another channel and another channel. And in Facebook that people... Why he need all of that headache? He cannot sit in a cave like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and move the standard for the rest of his life? It's very easy for him. He's more than happy to do that. He loves the Torah. He's got confidence. He doesn't need money. He doesn't have lust for women. Everything is clean and relaxed. He's relaxed. He's quiet. He can live.
He doesn't want to live. Why? Because he wants you to live. And you're drowning. So he's going and now he needs to swim and then he needs to run and to cross the desert and to lit fire and to bring money and to do this and do that and write books and sell them and to talk and to bargain and to fight and to argue and to pray and to pray and to pray and to pray. And to pray. Thousands of hours, thousands of hours, thousands, millions of hours, I don't know much, how much. Thousands of hours every day, every day, every day. And in Dilimud, the Torah is not learning for himself, like that we're sitting and learning for ourselves. He's sitting and learning for you, and you don't understand what he's doing. But this is really what that he's doing, he's thinking about you. He's thinking about you when he's learning. And if you think that, no, he's thinking about all of Am Israel, he's not thinking about me, you're all wrong. Because your mind is physical, you think that he's also limited like you. But he can contain tons of information in the same time. He can be with you, and can be with him, and can be with him. Like that Hashem Barach is inside infinity, and he is infinity. Those people that cancel themselves to their righteous rabbi, cancel themselves, they're in infinity also. They're in every place, every time, every moment. If we heard stories from righteous people that were with people in other lands, in other places, in the same time. The Rabbi Migur, the Rabbi Migur once came and knocked on a window of one of his Hasidim in the 30th floor in a hotel in Elat. Not to sin. Suddenly he hears something knocking on his window. He opened the curtain, he sees the Rabbi Migur in the air standing <laughs> in Elat. He told him, I told you to watch yourself when you're going to that wedding. He went to a family wedding. The Rabbi Migur is knocking on your window. So many stories like that. On Rav Berland, on Rav Shalom, on Rabbeinu HaKadosh. That saved people from danger, from real danger. You should believe that the righteous man is with you. That Rabbeinu HaKadosh and his students the righteous man of the generation, it's Rabbi Nachman mi Breslev. And he's got loyal students that we cannot understand their loyalty. We cannot understand. If you're a little bit humble, if you're doing it bodedut every day, and you understand the size of your snake, the size of your Yetzirah, and they conquered that one, and you don't even know the end of yours, just you understand that it's gigantic. If you came to that conclusion that you're very sick, and you're humble enough to understand that you're very, very far from Torah, from Kedusha. If really you have that small, tiny point of truth to understand that you are very far, by that you can understand a little bit which level they achieved. Because they killed that Yetzirah years on years ago. Years on years ago. 30 years ago, 70 years ago, 60 years ago, already died. No lust for women, no lust for nothing, no will for honor, for respect, for nothing. <clears throat> Just what Hashem do you want? What Hashem do you want? One time Rav Berland gave a class in a second floor, in a Beit Midrash in a second floor. When he went out, he was standing close to the steps, to the stairs. Suddenly, the students, the helpers that were with him, saw that he threw himself from those stairs. And he was rolling in the stairs. And he jumped. And he almost killed himself. And they ran all after him. And they asked him, Why have you done that? No one pushed him. No one touched him. Why have you done that? He said, I felt that people want to honor me. He didn't want to receive the honor. He threw himself. How you say Gere Madregot from all of the stairs? Yeah, all stairway. Through himself. Would you do the same something like that in order to receive the honor? We know that we're gonna pay to receive that honor. How much you can pay? Where are you paying? Where? Where can I put the money? Who to pay to? We have Yatsarara that is so low, so stupid. A person can fly all over the world for satisfying 15 minutes with a model, I don't know what. And he's ready to put thousands of dollars on that and to cheat his wife and he's telling her stories. I have meetings, you don't know, and this and that. And for what? 
five minutes of satisfaction that it's not even a satisfaction that it's all imagination and those righteous people are not there they're so different they're so pure they worked so hard to break that snake out of them that contamination that leprosy and Rav Shalom told me it's not allowed to make an oath to swear but I'm telling you that with faith that also for me it took a long time until I break the lust for women the Tabat Ni'uf took him also long time so you're gonna say all right long time for him it took six months you don't know what he was going through in those six months or one year you don't know what he went through he said Shmuel Anavi Forest gonna testify on me how many weeks I was spending in Shmuel Anavi Forest try that once Go for three days to the woods. Go! Go! Come back after three days. Go to Tzfat, graves of Tzadikim. There are places you can go quietly, no problems. Go for three days. Don't eat, don't drink, just pray, just cry. From the bottom of your heart you're going to feel a change. But we're not willing to do that. Like Rabbi Yitzhak <coughs> Breiter, one of the most righteous people in the world confessed on his conf confession in the eve of Rosh Hashanah he's confessing to Rabbeinu HaKadosh I want to be righteous man with all of lust and desires this is what that you want you want to be like an Admor eating steaks this is what you, you don't want to be like a real Admor that doesn't put nothing into his mouth and doesn't think about food like that I told you that the Magid Mimezri just said a person heard him saying that that he's discussed from food, the verse he couldn't eat for eight days just because he heard the voice of the Magid Mimezri you don't really want to uproot that bad attribute from yourself not to eat really you want to eat, we want to eat so this is why we have to build the vessels and the vessel, vessels, we're building them only in an honest conversation between you and Hashem Barach in the field. To talk to Hashem like you're talking to your best friend. Please Hashem help me. Please always be with me. Always support me. Always love me. Always make me feel that you're with me. And to do it every day. And even if you see that Hashem Chas Shalom is hiding in face, tell him I'm not buying that Hashem. I know that you love me. I believe that you love me. Even though that you're showing those angry faces, Hashem, I know that you love me. Deep inside, I know that you love me. Thank you very much. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah.